Good morning, everyone. Happy Coffee Talk Tuesday. I have iced coffee today from Saracopita. I don't know if anyone's ever been there, um, but it's my favorite coffee shop over by the Flanders Circle. So if you guys are in Riverhead or around Riverhead, I highly recommend Saracopita delicious coffee and they have really great treats too. Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Beth. Uh, Beth, can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Beth was one of our winners um, and we're gonna meet tomorrow and get her, um, her marketing on track. Good morning, One Dart Training. Um, so today, guys, we are talking about the Facebook ads algorithm. Um, I know that there's been some changes, and we haven't really talked about Facebook ads in a little while, so I thought that I would pop in um, on everybody's favorite day, to Coffee Talk Tuesday, also Taco Tuesday. Um, shout out to Julio, our mailman who loves tacos. Uh, so I thought that I would come on and kind of explain to you guys um, what the differences are uh, and what everything means because we have a, a few stages now that the um, that everything goes through. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the algorithm of Facebook ads. So um, anybody who's out there that does Facebook ads, you may have noticed um, there's a few new things, there's a few new features, but today I'm just gonna kind of talk about the way that ads are run and delivered. Um, so you'll see that now when you um, enter your ad, so when you put it in, it used to just go from review to then it was either active or not active. Um, but now there's something called the learning phase. Um, and that I'm going to go over, but first I want to touch on some things, um, because you may also realize that when you're doing, when you're filling out your ad, um, it says that your ad is auctioned off. Um, so I want to go over the difference between what, um, algorithm is and auction is. Good morning, Fred. Good morning, Donnie. Thanks for joining. Um, so the algorithm is uh, creates a system of factors. So it's kind of think of it as like a point scale, um, and those factors determine when and where your ad gets placed. Um, now the auction, on the other hand, uh, determines which ad from which advertiser gets placed to which user. So think of the algorithm as kind of the when and the where, and the auction is the who. Um, so the algorithm is gonna rank where your, um, how high in the news feed that your ads should be. And then the auction is going to say, okay, now um, which of these advertisers has really great engagement, which has you know the proper budget, um, and things along that nature. So. That's the difference between the algorithm and the auction. If you're going through and you're like, well, you know, why does it say that it's auctioned off? Um, so ads are rated in the auction based on the engagement, the audience, and the bid. Uh, so engagement is, you know, how often are people engaging with you on your ads, um, on your profiles? Um, what is you know, what is your audience size? You have a broad audience, you have a kind of a niche audience, uh, and what's your bid? Obviously, the amount of money that you're uh, willing to um, to spend on that. Shop by SKS, good morning, thanks for joining. Um, so in order to have a really great ad campaign, you want amazing engagement. I mean, of course we all do, who does it? Um, you want a well-defined audience, so nothing that's too broad, but nothing that's too small and the right bid to reach your audience. So you wanna make sure that you're spending enough money, um, but obviously staying within your budget. Uh, so those are the top three things that you're gonna need in order to run an awesome ad campaign. So how does Facebook determine uh, how your ads perform within the algorithm and the auction? So when you set up your ad campaign, um, and for those of you who have done ad campaigns and you know what I'm talking about, for those of you who haven't, check back and see some of our other uh, coffee talks because then um, you'll know how to set up an ad campaign. Uh, so when you first set up an ad campaign, you're going to pick 
your goal? Uh, is it brand awareness? Is it reach? Is it traffic? Is it conversion? Um, is it add to cart? Is it checkout? So you have all of these different options of how to set up your ad, what the goal of your ad campaign is. So once you set that up and you run through and you make your creative and you put in your content um, and you hit submit, it's going to go into review. Uh, obviously, Facebook needs to make sure that all of your ads are aligned with their guidelines um, and you're not kind of um, uh, violating any of them. That's what I was looking for. Um, and if anybody right now is having that issue where uh, your ads are getting flagged, keep in mind um, since every since everything that's going on, um, everything at Facebook is running majority on AI. So your flags or your campaigns may get flagged more now than they would previously because they don't have the, the physical manpower to go through and review. They're relying a lot on AI um, to make sure that everybody's following the guidelines. And that also means, unfortunately, that getting a, um, uh, a review, a manual review to get them pushed back out um, is taking a lot of time. So if you guys are finding that you're having issues with your ad campaigns, that they're getting flagged, find out what the issue is, make that correction. But my personal suggestion right now um, would be to, instead of sub resubmitting it for review, is creating a new ad campaign. I know it's kind of a bummer and um, you know definitely more labor intensive, uh, but for right now purposes, until uh, Facebook can get people back into the office and working on normal hours, um, if you're running into that issue, that is my personal suggestion right now. Um, Teresa, good morning. Fred's going to be doing an ad campaign shortly. Good. So you'll want to know what I'm talking about today. So um, after you put, submit your, um, your ad for review and it gets approved, it enters something called the learning phase. Now, this is newer to ad campaigns for the people who have been running them out there for a while. So the learning phase is the amount of time that the algorithm needs in order to figure out how to deliver that ad. Um, so it goes through and it's going to start doing that kind of point system, ranking it, um, but then also trial and error with showing it to uh, people that are within your target audience and seeing who fits the mold of best response for this ad. So um, they're figuring out where to where to put it, position it. So are you going to be in the feed? Are you in the stories? Um, are you in articles? You know, so, so they have to figure out where exactly to place you and also who to show it to. So people who are in a certain designated area that have similar interests, um, age groups, you know, all of the demographics that you guys can put in there. Um, so now it's going to enter the learning phase. Do not change your ad within the learning phase. You want to get out of the learning phase as quickly as possible. Um, and the way that you do that is your ad has to get 50 events. So that means anything that you, um, the thing that you put as your goal for the ad, so maybe it's traffic. So you have to get 50 people to click on the link before you can exit that learning phase. Um, and once you get out of the learning phase, that's when your ad becomes active, which is what we're used to seeing. Uh, and that means that your, um, your ad's going to start delivering optimally. So the algorithm learns from a series of, uh, of patterns. So the more that your ad gets out there, um, so the more impressions you get, the better the algorithm is actually going to know what your ad is about. Uh, which is going to lower your CPA, which is your cost per action. So is it link clicks? Um, like I said, is it traffic, conversions, is it brand awareness? Um, all those fun things. So when your ad goes from the learning um, stage and switches to active, you're going to see your CPAs drop down quite a bit. Uh, which is what we want to see in the marketing ad world, right? We want the lowest cost per action. We want everybody to be doing what we want and we want to pay the least amount for it. Um, so after your 50 events, your ad is considered kind of optimized or they found the optimal um, audience for you. So you're going to get the most amount of engagement or whatever it is that you put as uh, the goal for your ad. So the activist um, portion is going to be the most stable 
of your of the phases um, and it's gonna be where your costs should remain pretty consistent you shouldn't see any major spikes up and down where you know my maybe my CPA was um, 10 cents today and then all of a sudden it's 60 cents the next day that's something's wrong there um, so this should be a roundabout of where your cost per action is um, and you're gonna see the most um, consistent conversion through that so you should see um, you know your impressions that stay around the same your frequency stay about the same um, so that's kind of the happy place where you guys want to be right we want to get to that um, active phase if your ad does not get 50 events it is going to go into the limited learning stage um, now this is not where you guys want to be um, some companies can kind of hang out in this purgatory zone, I guess we can call it. Um, but I really don't recommend anyone being there unless you have a huge budget. Uh, Ed Marion, good morning. Thanks for joining. Um, so you so you don't want to enter that limited learning stage um, because essentially what it's doing is it's not optimally um, delivering your ad. And so you're going to have some high... CPAs, um, your cost is going to drive up, and we don't like that, right? Um, so most businesses, you guys are going to want to avoid this. And if you're having issue with your ads going into the limited uh, learning stage, uh, and you think that maybe you're still doing okay there, feel free to reach out, and we can kind of brainstorm of how you can either get out of that stage or um, if there if that is actually working for you. Um, so when you're creating your ads. You want to remember that that learning stage is going to be in the beginning. So let's say, for instance, I want to create a 4th of July ad. I want to start that ad now because you're going to need some time to get out of that learning stage. I'm not talking about the limited learning stage because that comes after. So it's review, learning stage, active, and or limited learning stage. So you want to get out of that learning stage, um, especially if you're trying to run a holiday campaign. So I think that this is important now because if you want a July 4th ad campaign running for July 4th, you need to start it like today. Um, so you want to make sure that you're planning accordingly with your ads that you're giving yourself time to get out of that learning stage. Um, and also you want to make sure that your active time, the amount of time that your ad is remaining active and delivering optimally, you want to make sure that you give that enough time too. So we do not run ads for anything less than two weeks. And I really say that hesitantly. Um, I push for a month at minimum. Um, but if you're going to run an ad, don't do a couple days, don't do a week because the algorithm won't have enough time to really capture who your target audience is and deliver it to the people that are going to find it. Um, helpful, intriguing, interesting, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, all right, Fred, Fred's got to run, but he's going to check this out later. Um, watch this on the replay. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're giving yourself time to get out of that learning stage, but also giving yourself enough time to run the ad. So this way it's delivered um, optimally into your target audience. Um, and then once your ad changes over to active, then your CPAs will drop down, like I said, and um, hi, Oscar. Thanks for joining. Um, and then your ads will be running optimally and being delivered to your target audience. So the last two tips I have for you um, is if you're planning on increasing your budget after you get out of the learning stage. So like I said, learning stage, we want to get out of it as quickly as possible. So you don't want to make any changes during the learning stage. Any changes that you make after the learning stage when you go into active cred good morning thanks for joining um when you go into the active stage it could potentially kick you back into that learning stage which we want to stay out of so if you're making content changes if you're changing the images uh the text anything along those lines that's going to automatically kick you out but if you want to increase your budget because maybe your ad's doing really well you can increase it in small increments. Um, so I mean like 10 to 20% increments. That should still keep you in the active phase. 
Um, if you go in and you add a bunch of money to it, it's going to kick you back uh, to your learning phase, and then we have to do it all over again. But you could add, if you want to do it daily, if you want to do a big chunk of change, you could do about 10% additional to your ad budget per day. Um, but anywhere between 10 to 20% um, adding to your budget should still keep you in that safe zone to stay within your active ad um, and not push you back into the into the uh, learning phase. There we go. <laughs> um, okay. And then finally, of course, it wouldn't be a Coffee Talk Tuesday if I didn't bring up analytics. Um, so, guys, just keep in mind, there are 7 million global Facebook advertisers in the world. So you want to make sure that you're checking your analytics. Keep an eye as your ad goes through those phases, especially now that you're starting to get used to these different phases and what they mean. Um, keep an eye on how your ads are performing and the differences of what's going on. Because if your ad is profitable in that limited, in that, I'm sorry, not limited, in the learning stage. So right after a review, if you start to see some pretty um, intriguing or, you know, nice looking CPAs, um, cost per action for anybody that's tuning in. Um, so if you're seeing some really nice uh, numbers in that learning stage, then your active stage is going to be way more um, optimal than if you're maybe not seeing some such great numbers. So if you're running multiple ad campaigns and you see one uh, campaign is doing really well, in the limited in, in the learning stage sorry um so if you see one ad is doing very well in the learning stage take note of the differences between that and maybe your other ad campaigns and try to mimic um that ad going forward because like i said if when your when facebook's algorithm is learning about your ad and putting it out there and seeing how it does um, if you're getting really great numbers there, then that probably means that you're spot on with your demographics, um, with your target market. You have great um, content. You know, maybe your image is super awesome. Uh, so whatever it may be, just make sure you guys are taking notes of that um, because this is just going to help you in the long run to have more profitable ads. All right, guys, so that is the Facebook ads algorithm. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to um, reach out, DM us, shoot us an email, give us a call, all the usual. Um, I hope everybody is staying safe out there, um, socially distancing, enjoying this weather, um, and all that fun stuff. And if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, have a great coffee talk. Tuesday, also Taco Tuesday. <laughs> All right, bye guys.